let's make a pot holder with the pot holder loom. This is an 18 peg loom and we're going to make the back and forth twill pot holder. It creates tiny twill zigzags in the design and this easy loom weaving pattern is fully reversible and it works up quickly and easily. You can find a detailed chart of this design at Piglet's Pot Holder Patterns. This is the back and forth twill and it's shared with permission under Creative Commons license. Let's begin our tutorial. Welcome to Good Knit Kisses. We're all about helping you stitch your love and love your stitches. This pattern has written instructions on our blog and right and left-handed video tutorials, so get the links to all of that down below, as well as a link to get this loom if you want to get this particular one. This is an 18-peg, 7-inch loom from Cindy Wood Looms. You can use another size or spacing, but this is 18 pegs across. You're also going to need two colors of cotton loops, 18 in each. So we're going to use 18 of color yellow in here, uh, which is my color A and my color B is purple. Get whatever colors you like. A contrasting look is really great. And then I'm also showing my crochet hook and my little weaving tool, but mostly I just use my hands and maybe a crochet hook in the very end. All right, let's dive in to make this today. We are going to put on our warp. First, we're going to put in um, all of our color A loops from top to bottom, bottom to top, it doesn't matter, across all 18 of these pegs. So all 18 loops across the top and bottom will get the same color. So go ahead and do that. And while I'm doing this, I'll tell you a little bit about the pattern. So the first two rows we're going to weave, uh, well, all the rows are gonna be using our contrast B, but the first two rows, um, are gonna be uh, unique. They'll get repeated later on, but the uh, rows three through six, it's a four row repeat, rows three through six, you're going to repeat um, three more times after we do it. So it's a four row repeat, and we'll do that just in a minute. Pause your video as you need. last one. All right, now we need our contrast B. Okay, so row one, you're going to weave over two and under two and repeat that. So we're going to go over the first two, go under the next two, making sure that you're going underneath both loops of each cotton loop. So over two, under two, and repeat. Over two, under two, over two, under two, over two, under two, and then you'll have two loops left, and you're gonna go over those last two loops and place your loop, all right? Now, row two, we're only gonna go over one, so we're just adjusting it, so go over one, and then under the next two, and then we're gonna go over two, under two, and repeat across until we have one left, so this is over two, under two, over two, under two, over two, under two, and over two, and then we have this one left, and it'll just go under one. Okay, so uh, we are ready to begin our four row repeat. So the next four rows is what we're going to repeat over and over until we get to the very end. So this is row number three or row one of our repeat. Row three, we're gonna begin with under two over two. So we're gonna go underneath these first two, place our loop and over two and then under two Over two, under two, over two, under two, over two, and then we have two loops at the end and we're going underneath those two. Make sure you're not twisting your loop, which I did here, so let me just take this off and fix it now. There we go. All right. Next row, 
row four, we're gonna go over one first, and then we go under two, over two. So we're over this first one, under two, over two, again, under two, over two, under two, over two, under two, over two, and then under this last remaining one. Okay, oh, and I've got one that's messed up, so let me go back here. You see, I, I went halfway in between this one, so we wanna fix that. Okay, now that I've got that fixed, and we're gonna go to row five, which is over two, under two. So over those two, under these, over two, under two, over two, under two, and so on till the end. The last two, you're going over those. And the last of this repeat, uh, this is row six. We're gonna weave over one and then under two, over two, under two. So you can see it's um, changes of weaving two over and two under, alternating every other row, but we kind of slide that and it shifts and you get these like little mini zigzags. So from um, this little part here down, this is your four row repeat here. So we're going to repeat these three more times. One, two, three, and you will have it finished. So let's begin this one again and then you'll keep repeating on your own. So this begins with um, row three, which is um, weave over under two, over two. So under these two, over two, and then under two. So if you look up here, you can see that this matches this one here. And so you're just matching what was done on this row up here. Okay, so continue on um, with this repeat. Uh, pause your video and I'll meet you on the last few rows to show you finishing this off. All right, we'll see you then. All right, I'm down to the end. That's what it looks like so far. And I'm gonna go over two. Um, this is the second from the last. We're gonna go over two, under two. And I like to take my crochet hook and skip over to the ones I'm going to pick up or that I need to go under. So I'm gonna pick up these two right here. And I'm just gonna lay my uh, loop on underneath where they go and then lay these back down. So over two, under two, and then I can go across and do the same. So I skip two, and then I pick up the next two, and then lay this. And if you need another hand to do it, you can just lay it across here, all the way across where it's gonna its final resting place is, and then pick it up as you need to when you get the next one. So here's two here, I'm gonna pick up the next two, put this down, and lay them back down. Pick it back up, skip two, go to the next two, and this will be the last time I do it for the row because the final two are going over. Okay, now we have one more row left and we're gonna go over one here and then under the next two. and lay those down. Pick that up, skip two, pick these up. I think I'm grabbing a, there we go. I was grabbing a string from the one below. There we go, 
skip two, pick up the next two. So if I just laid this down, it might uh, pop back under. That's why I go ahead and stretch it across if I need to. Skip two, pick up two. Almost done. I just had this very last one to do. So I'm going to pick this one up, pick up the very last stitch, and put this one back down. The weave is down, and now I'm going to put this warp back down. Okay, so we're all finished, and we're going to go ahead and start taking all of these off one loop at a time. Uh, you're going to go across this top line and go all the way down one by one. I actually like to start one over on this side over here. It's just what I do. Um, so we're going to lift up and then grab the next one. So I've got the one right before the corner, and then this corner here. Lift the back loop over the front loop like that. Then we're going to go to the next one. Take that off, lift the back loop over the front loop, and so on, all the way across. And if you um, like to have a little bit of attention, I've shown in some of my other videos, uh, you can finish working one like this, and then hang one of the loops back on here for some tension so that by the time you get to the end, um, it won't be flying off of here and all of these loops um, will have no tension and maybe um, this little strand uh, would, would easily pop up. So I'm gonna show you what that looks like. And I'm gonna go around, uh, pause your video, and I will meet you um, back at the end here. So just keep going one by one, lifting up and over. And then every few stitches, you can place back on one of these loops here and it'll create that tension. All right, pause your video and I will see you a few stitches from the end. See you there. I'm at the end, you can see I have three left, but these are holding on because I wanted to keep it from jumping off of my loom. I didn't want these last loops to just pop off. So continuing on. And now I'm at my last loop, pull that on through. Okay, and then I actually like to go back through um, this very first, if you remember my very first one was purple, so I'm grabbing that one and lifting up and over and it kind of completes that line there. And then I'll end up tucking this one in. So first I'm gonna take these off the loom, just take these loops off, and yes, we are going to get them stretched back in the way they're supposed to be. They're a little stretched out right now. Okay, so I'm just simply going to come to those loops and pull on the opposite part of the loop to get it with the tension back the way it's supposed to be. There we go. And of course, you can choose not to do that. You can even, if it's too... If it's too much, you can pull on the other side and it will um, ease some of that tension as well. Um, you can choose not to do that technique and just be real careful that last round, um, that last end, so that you don't pull it off of the loom. That's okay. This is my loop down here, and this one was one that was pulled tight, so I'm gonna pull on that and find the other end of it. There it is. And if you have any of these little sort of hairy loops here or hairy parts of the loops that are coming off, you can just simply trim that up now. That's just part of the cotton loops there. It's okay to cut them, trim them. Just don't cut too short. Okay, so now this final loop, I can go through it and weave back behind these other ones. So come through here and pull, and then pull underneath another color of the same. 
There we go. So now it's hiding and we have our final pot holder. So you can see it has these um, little zigzaggy lines here. It almost looks checkerboard, but it's just a bit of a squiggle kind of type of tweed look. And this is what it looks like on the reverse. Well, I hope you've enjoyed weaving this pot holder on Loom today. Be sure and check out our other videos of our pot holders down below and all those patterns on our blog. Thanks for joining us again and good knit kisses. Thanks for joining us today, where we help you stitch your love and love your stitches. See you again soon.